<laughs> Thank you, Ren. I'm going to number my points in the hope that I can say something quickly so that we can have time for discussion. Um, sitting here <clears throat> thinking about the politics of shame and the politics of repugnance, <clears throat> I had to think, as I've told some of my friends before, that even thinking about Trump and let alone writing and speaking about him makes me uh, ill. Um, and that's a, that's a question of, of the insult to the, the decency of human beings, uh, which one feels when we think about Trump. So what I've entitled my, my talk um, is that notes about the idea of Trump as a representative of both the scapegoating outsider and the fascistoid risk-taking character type. And I footnoted this 19, in 1958, I happened to be in Germany, um, in Stuttgart, and I saw the first performance of the Resistible Rise of Arturo Ui by Bertolt Brecht. Um, I don't know that anybody has seen that. that, that uh, and so I've subtitled my talk, Beef Mahatman, The Irresistible Rise of Arturo uh, Stump. Uh, and by, if you know the play, you know that the Arturo Uri, the name Uri, was uh, characterized as a, as a pig sound. Uri, Uri, Uri. Um, so the essence of my comments is that Trump, and we've heard this, he acts out the role of a wizard prophet who magically, and what I'm trying to do here is to try to get to the symbolic underbelly of the cultural phenomenon that has produced Trump and communicates Trumpism. <coughs> that magically individualizes the group by assuring them that it, it, the id, it, the figure, will tolerate reality for them and also render their fears into the lowest common denominator of what constitutes security, terror, economic terror, projection of a libidinal, uh, attractive figure, including the hysteric about, the hysteric who is hysterical about sexuality. Um, his blustering aggression and deceit was characterized by the, the, the type in, in Brecht's play in, from 1938, it was not performed in Germany again until 1958, um, was a combination of Chaplin and Keaton, and, a, and a, a character who did not understand his own motives, except as those motives came out of an Al Capone type gangster <laughs> figure. Trump is a grotesque character type, an American bandit, Americans love bandits, outlaws, maverick businessmen, Billy the Kids, sheriffs, all in one Walmart package. <laughs> Mr. Trump goes to Washington to clean up the mess. That's an illusion to a film you must know. The fascistoid character structure notwithstanding, what is good for Trump's business is good for America. He has a calling, in German a roof, um, a, a mission, he has a calling, he is called to run the dictatorship of the mean-spirited. A handy definition of fascism for me has always been to organize meanness as a trust company. <laughs> but it is in the name of the market, as the trust wars were in the play by Brecht, that um, the trust wars, which are equivalent to the old institutions of the church and the military as the dominant institutions that will protect us from being infected by those whose identifications are not ours. He symbolizes the, the petty bourgeois love of the market, and he comes, and this comes in my second point, or third point actually, um, from the, uh, one's ex one can understand this, illuminate this by one's extensive thinking about psychoanalysis and its earliest political implications around World War I, um, when World War II began. Uh, this is in Freud's Totem and Taboo, it's in Freud, group psychology and analysis of the ego, and, um, and the, um, his work on hysterical uh, character types. Um, Number four, my point is that the expectations of the American people, whether one rest, recognizes it or not, politically, culturally, or socially, is, that, is the expectations of an impending catastrophe. Um, the culture has already experienced in its own uh, cultural symbolization a strong uh, messianic and apocalyptic images of the end that marvel its history, as um, John has pointed out. Uh, at Marvel, its history, 
since the end of the loss of the Vietnam War and the effects of the Civil War. Right now, as we speak, there are more African Americans sitting in American prisons than were than existed in this, after the Civil War. Um, the other of the ritual of the scapegoat and the magical thaumaturge is the magical prophet who comes on stage to symbolize our deep needs for a savior. Um, is that is that the uh, the other of ri of the ritual of the scapegoat? Um, is that the, uh, is the controlling of aggression through groups in the construction of a mock scapegoat who, a, who is a thaumaturge, a wizard prophet, who will magically individualize the group. It's very important to recognize that what's going on there is not just a, a crowd or a mob, but it's the attempt to individualize, individualize the group, so we can talk more about that, by assuring them that it, the figure of salvation or therapy or whatever you want to call it, will um, um, tolerate reality for them. What they cannot tolerate, what they have lost, the figure will tolerate reality for them as a substitute for them. So how much the question of, Trump, of Trumpism is raised, is, uh, we've heard, is how much reality can, um, can we uh, be tolerated at all when the, when the reality is so laced with the fear of violence and that a violence that cannot be named but only dramatized and enacted. Trump asks for sacrifice, as the Thaumaturge does. The Thaumaturge is the Greek, is the Greek magical prophet who it brings wonder tales, wonders into the into the world. Number five, his whole be his whole being is what I call fascistoid, um, inspiring group fantasies. It fits well with the idea that was in, in the play by, by Brad Kennis, as we know from Hitler's speeches, that one is asking the, the group, the mob, the masses, by the way, masses in, in German is, it means crowds, uh, not masses in an undifferentiated, undifferentiated way. But um, the idea of group psychology and analysis of ego is a way to understand the character of mass grouping under extreme circumstances. For Freud, there seemed to be something natural in this grouping that is unrepresented and also being also depicted as, a, as primal to the group that forms around destruction and brother-father war of the clans. This is the central element in, in Freud's essay, which he referred to. Trumpism, Trump and Trumpism displays a ruthless, even an egomaniacal character, which is endearing which is endearing. Um, <laughs> Trump provokes destructive anxieties in the group and dramatizes the already existing institutionalizes of the dark impulses of scapegoating, as Hannah Arendt put it in her, in her wonderful series of essays, Politics in Dark Times. And this is what we're in, uh, Politics in Dark Times. Number six, my next point, I'm okay. Crowds and groups represent the phenomenon of power 